<clears throat> Ignite Agility with Rob Myers, take two. <laughs> we'll call the setup take one with the, the waterfall. Yes, the <laughs> waterfall. So thanks for joining me again today, Rob. We're excited to host you once again for some technical training. Thank you. It's good to be here. And uh, let's talk a little bit about what the Scrum Alliance has done with the Certified Scrum Developer Program. Sure thing. Uh, should, I, should I start with the history? A little short history? Let's give them the short version of the history because it was painful and we're happy to be moving on from it. Yes, you had to take five days of training. It was either a full five days of CSD or two days of CSM and three days of CSD in order to get your CSD. And now they've started it. That's it. And <laughs> <laughs> too many things to track. Right. And uh, it was not popular. Um, it, it also wasn't quite as effective as what I think we've got set up now. Um, so what they did was they sort of did a reboot. Uh, re rearrange things. Um, there's still a CSD, which is sort of on the equal footing with the CSM or CSPO. It's uh, maybe entry an level. Entry yeah. level. Yep. Yeah. Um, it does. It does. It is specifically geared towards uh, the software development practices. So it's uh, and it doesn't have to be. They say, but uh, I I can't address that uh i would say it's it's sort of the the uh, uh entry level for the team members right developers testers that's anybody of thing. on the team doing work right so it's introducing them to the the uh various topics around that which is you know what makes something team centric what makes scrum team centric and what sort of practices specific to different industries uh in this case uh software development would be appropriate for uh, you know, so filling in the the what the team is doing on a day to day basis. Um, yeah, and there has been some scuttlebutt in our community that I'm sure you've followed about what if it isn't software development? And I believe as educators, we are empowered by the Scrum Alliance to adapt our certified Scrum developer accordingly. So we we could, in fact. Um, tailor that to a hardware client. We could in fact tailor that to a services client at the team level. You and I, for this introductory one we're holding publicly, are choosing to focus on software practices just because it's it has been a big gap out there. It has been a, a need that right. hasn't been filled. Right. Yeah. Uh, and plus that's that's my department, right? That's the area that, that I can actually address. So I'm not really a, a hardware guy. Uh, so that would be a little bit awkward. <laughs> uh, I was talking about you to a different client earlier this week who asked about the CSD, and we'll talk about the advanced CSD next. And they said, I see on your profile that you have it. I said, why, yes, I do. And they said, you know, you've told us a little bit about your background because um, I, I did code in another life. And they said, uh, are you teaching those programs? I said, not at the moment, because I'm a little lazy. I said, you know, Rob Myers is um, somebody that we lean on because he knows all the modern programming practices and languages. I said, I could talk to you about C, <laughs> maybe a little C++ if I dusted that off. But, but I said, Rob is pretty versed in letting people code in whatever language mm -hmm. they're currently working in. So, you know, your program has been pretty versatile in that regard also. Yeah. But the yeah. CSD, we're not making people code anymore, right? The, the CS... entry level one is not right. touching a keyboard. Right. Uh, yeah. And we'll, we'll have, so, so it'll depend on who shows up really. I like to, I like to adapt the class to who arrives. Um, I mean, if we ended up with a whole bunch of, developers who were familiar with coding practices, then we'd probably get into uh, doing some software development. Mm -hmm. However, that's not a requirement. And, uh, you, you know, we're going to have other simulations that will uh, demonstrate the same sorts of activities. So, so that's the kind of thing that I'm looking forward to doing is, uh, is coming up with a simulation, uh, especially on, you know, on online. Uh, 
I right. got one for, for in-person, but coming up with something online that sort of emulates software development. And then uh, moving on to the ACSD, I would say that's where we're going to, you know, do deep dive into actual coding, probably right from the start, you know, right as they drop Hands into on. The, Yeah. Yeah. First couple of hours of that course, it'll be, you'll be, you'll be looking at code. <laughs> and well, perhaps writing it. And um, for years, I think people have used the CSM, the Certified Scrum Master, mm -hmm. as Scrum 101 or just, you know, diving headfirst into Scrum 101, even though the learning objectives are geared towards Scrum Mastery. So then you've got Certified Scrum Product Owner, CSPO, on the same footing both completely low barrier to entry, entry points, introductory points into the Scrum Alliance. So people will say, well, should I come to the product owner training also? And I'll say, well, what problem are you trying to solve? Like, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because yes, we do touch on a little Scrum 101, but then it's tools and techniques a product owner could use or anybody serving a product owner um, in that capacity. So what's great about what they've done with the CSD now is instead of the, the chessboard game of, well, do you already have a CSM? Well, you could go take a CSM. Well, I don't want a CSM. Oh, well, then you got to go take these other introductory classes from somebody like Rob or somebody from like Angela. It's like, well, how do I get those? Well, those are held fewer and further between because there's no standards around them. Ugh. So now we've got this two-day CSD, learning objectives for a team. And like you and I were talking about, what if somebody said, you know, I used to be a tester, but now I'm on this scrum team. They can come to a CSD. Right. And in fact, one of the things that I should mention is that we're not just talking about uh, uh, developer practices. We are talking about things like estimation. Uh, we will talk about uh, testing, uh, a little bit about business analysis and that sort of thing as it, as it, uh, uh, applies to scrum. So right. there will be a lot of stuff that you're not going to see in a, uh, uh, CSM or a CSPO. So there is, there is unique material there. Uh, there's also the scrum foundations, but there's, there's definitely uh, team centric unique materials there. Uh, and that way, you know, the, the things like estimation doesn't have to be covered in the CSM unless the trainer wants to. So not every trainer does, right. um, you know, Christian and I have chosen for a long time to do that because sometimes if it's a CSM the scrum master as coach feels like they leave empty handed if they can't even acknowledge or speak to the topic. But yeah, that's not the product owner's lane at all. I mean, you know, the product owner might have to use that information to build their forecasts, but we don't want them leading the witness. We don't want them, <laughs> you know, getting into the team's lane there. Um, so certified Scrum developer confuses people, but it is now also consistent with Scrum Guide because the new Scrum Guide just calls the role developer. You know, the, 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 the term is developer, regardless if you're running a test, maybe you're doing a little analysis, maybe you are doing a little code, you're a member of this group we call developers. They're basically not the scrum master and not the product owner, <laughs> period. Of course, you would do it as a not, not equal to, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> that makes maybe so much that's more what I sense. Should... On a whiteboard, I'll just write it out as code. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the real question. Do you use the two opposing greater than less than symbols or do you do the equal with the slash through? Which which uh, coding camp did you come from to do not equal? I don't think either of those. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's bang equals for not equals. Oh, and, bang equals is your, uh, okay, yeah. okay, I got it. That's from the C. Yeah, you should in the C, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I think you were talking about Fortran there. <laughs> Maybe Cobol. Or, I'm kind of no. old. Oh yeah, Cobol. <laughs> yeah, Fortran was dot GT dot or dot L E dot for less than or equal to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I always say I'm the old lady in the community. I'm I'm quickly approaching the get off my lawn stage of my scrum career. Um, okay, so we got our CSD. Yay. Uh, Attended yay. Rob's class two days online. Got Boom, this CSD. thing. Yep. If I want to come to an ACSD, not only do I need to have my CSD if I want the credential, 
Right. I mean, you can just come and learn code. That's cool too. Sure. But then you need 12 months or more of work experience on a scrum as, team. Right. On a developer. Scrum team. As a well, developer, what? where a developer is not the scrum master or the product owner. Defined as not the scrum master, not the product owner. So uh, we were talking before class started about the user interface on the Scrum Alliance website that a candidate would have to go through. So if I took your CSD and I'm now applying to come to the ACSD, I log onto my Scrum Alliance profile that they give me. I go into my work experience and say, yeah, I've been a developer on this collaborative leadership team here in Minneapolis. I have to choose developer Developer. from the Scrum experience drop down and put that work history in and then I'm good to go, right? Right. And uh, the the drop down, if I recall correctly, says Scrum Master, Product Owner, Developer, and Other. And Other is the dreaded choice. Other. Don't pick Other. Don't pick Other. Even if you're a senior software engineer or a a senior tester, I'm sure testers are going to love that, right? Testers are going to have to pick Developer. What is it? Developer, yes. Because that's the the scrummy name that's given the scrummy to the name. role. Because uh, sometimes people will say, but Angela, if I'm selected for random audit and they call my company, they're going to say, well, Rob was a senior programmer level two. Well, we don't really care what your day job title on your nameplate is. Or Angela was a senior tester level three. Well, no, uh, interesting, but what scrummy role did you play? So right. developer. Don't choose, don't choose the dreaded other. <laughs> I don't even know why it's there. Why do we even have that field? Why do we even have that field? I don't know. So that you know. can be a certified other. Certified other. So advanced CSD. So yes. now we've got that in two days because we can focus. We can just focus on the technical stuff. Well, and and the Scrum Alliance isn't, uh, limiting us to two days. Oh, okay. Good point. Um, and also they're not necessarily limiting us to, uh, delivering it as courses, but, um, I mean, we've, we've had the three, the old three day CSD. And, Which was um, tough. It was tough. Yeah. And this is, this is the other thing to keep in mind is that we're covering a lot of this in, you know, a lot of the introductory material that I usually cover in the three day in the first morning of the three day we're covering mm-hmm. it in the previous course, yeah. So, so this is enabling us to deliver it in two days. In two days, it's going to be it's going to be uh, intense. Let's put it that way. And it's also not the end of the journey because um, presumably people will continue forward. Uh, but it, it is the case that I think we can we can get uh, you know enough hands on experience with the practices in two days. Uh, it's it's. You know, and th- then it's four days of training all total, plus twelve years or twelve not twelve years, twelve months of <laughs> twelve months of development. Twelve years. No. Um, <laughs> but but it's you know one of the things that I've always struggled with with the uh, old CSD program is that it's um, if you do the math, it comes out to for a team of four developers, one product owner and one scrum master, it comes out to ten times the the cost. To buy to train the team, which is crazy, right? So it's like these are the people we want skilled up. These are the people doing the work, right? And these are the people who, if they don't have some sort of uh, uh, like uh, not, no pressure, safe environment to try out these practices, are going to be, you know, hey, we're in a scrum team. Well, what do we do now? What do we do differently? And that's the whole point of the uh, of these two courses is to convey that what they may have learned in college, what they may have learned on the job in a, you know, non-scrum environment or <clears throat> a poor scrum environment is, <laughs> right. is, you know, is very, um, if I can use the word waterfall-esque, right? Yeah. I, you know, they're the traditional, we're going to do the analysis, we're going to do the design, we're going to do the coding, and then if there's time left, we'll do the testing. Well, Instead, we have to come up with new ways that fit into an incremental and iterative development environment. What are those new practices? And so if they don't get that, 
then they're going to be struggling with it. And then the, you know, the team is, is floundering and the management is going, well, this scrum stuff doesn't work. Throw it out. Yeah. You didn't actually try it. I would say you didn't actually try it. It's just like me arguing with my son, uh, broccoli for dinner. I don't like broccoli. You've never actually tried broccoli. Yeah, but I just know I don't like it. You haven't actually tried it. And then, you know, once he actually tries it, this isn't so bad. Oh, <laughs> you actually tried yeah. it. But yeah, I call it a waterfall hangover, right? When they approach their sprint like a waterfall. So the other thing to note about that 12 months, not 12 years, 12 months Sorry, yeah. <laughs> of work history is it just has to be within the recent five years. Um, Cause some people will say, well, no, wait a minute. I get my CSD. Now I have to wait 12 months? No, there's no waiting. You probably already have the work history. You're just now getting around to getting the badge. I always call it your driver's license, right? The entry level one is your driver's license. Okay, I've been working for 12 months. Get my CSD badge. I am good to go, which is why when we schedule these back to back, if somebody has the time and the motivation, they can knock it all out in four four days if they're a motivated individual, because you did say it's intense. It's yeah. The last two days should be, are going to be very intense. Yeah. The coding, the hands-on, the ACSD. Yeah. So the one thing I don't think we have ready for prime time or that isn't live just yet is the certified scrum professional in the developer path. Right. Um, in true iterative fashion, the scrum Alliance got something out there in the hands of the users first. Hey, let's clean up the CSD and the ACSD. We'll come along and address certified scrum professional once we get some of these folks getting their ACSD. Yeah. Yeah. So as and it stands today, we don't really have much info there. Well, and there's there we don't have much info for a couple of reasons. One, because I've been uh, neglecting to show up for the, the work uh, sessions in the past <laughs> couple of weeks. But uh, we we were we were working on it like once a week we would get together and work on the learning objectives for uh, CSD and then we uh, did the the ACSD and as far as I know they're working hard on the CSPD mm. um, but yeah I just don't have a whole lot of information as to how that's going right now so okay. But uh, yeah, they're, they are actively working on it. I see it on my schedule still, so they're not done. <laughs> I'm assuming right. that when they're done, they'll stop having meetings. Maybe not. We get along really well. But um, yeah, there's uh, uh, it's coming. It's on its way. And I there's a little bit of a um, backward compatibility with what was called the CSP originally. Ah, uh, yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't know exactly how that's going to... Um, you know, work. But uh, one of the things that did happen when the transition from the old style CSD to the new style CSD happened is if you had your CSD prior to this, you got an automatic upgrade to ACSD. Yes, I know. I saw that on my profile. I am now an advanced certified scrum developer. There you go. Even though I, I didn't, I didn't take it from you, and I'm sorry I didn't. Uh, I took it from somebody that was really uh, specific about the language, so they weren't as versatile as you are in letting people play with their own programming language. So I had to take it in C Sharp Oh, and not uh, bad. it wasn't because uh, the instructor did let us cheat. You know, we got to use all the Microsoft tools, which you practically don't need to think. Exactly. Well, that's the great thing about a lot of these practices. If you know, we're, we're talking about things like pair programming. So you've got somebody else working with you. You've got uh, an IDE that fills in the blanks for you. You you know, you're doing test driven development, which, uh, you know, you're, you're thinking about what is it that we need? And the test tells you, well, you haven't got that built yet. You know, you basically have to just show up and uh, but you still have to be a very intelligent human being because um, that these are these are practices that guide you, guide your intelligence, guide your creativity into the very concrete and very detailed uh, job of explaining it to a computer. (laughs) And computers are very literal and they will do exactly what you tell them to do, even if it's wrong. So what we're doing is trying to make it right. Yes, they are. Building right. So. Yeah. And so I think one of the things that the CSD will now fill the gap on is even getting people out of the waterfall-esque 
mindset that you mentioned, because I still, even to this day, even though we're in 2021, run across, you know, information technology groups, development groups, whatever you want to call them, who are like, no, the business analyst is the only person who can talk to the product owner. And they hand off these things to me, I'm the developer, I hand things off to that tester, but even suggesting pairing recently, you know, as I did to uh, one such company who shall remain nameless to protect the guilty, that just racked their world. Because isn't that just two people doing the work of one? Why would we do that? Smoothing out the handoffs, no more handoffs, yeah. Well, I always tell them too, it's preventing defects. Because if you do have somebody navigating right? Or somebody doing real-time code review, somebody doing real-time testing. Now we're moving from, oh, let our customers find the bugs. They'll report them to, hey, let's prevent those. You know, you mentioned test-driven development. Let's, let's write the test first so that we can prevent any of those errors. Right. Catches, catches the error, allows you to make mistakes, uh, but catch them before they go any further downstream. And uh, so, you know, if I'm doing test-driven development and I make a small, tiny, little obvious mistake and the test f still fails, then I know that I made that mistake. Uh, and there's all sorts of other things that happen as we go. We've got somebody watching us. We've got, uh, you know, continuous integration. And then, you know, it, it's, it's if, you, if you've looked into anything like, uh, you know, systems thinking or theory of constraints or lean, you know that one of the, one of the biggest costs to uh, building something you know, the quality problems are one of the biggest costs because yeah. it gets downstream. I should go the other way. It gets downstream <laughs> and then it has to come all the way back. Right. Yeah. And so that, you know, people, people like, Oh, you know, it's the, it's two people doing the work of one, but, but if you, if you just had that one person doing it and they create some defect, you know, that's like 10 times the cost to go all the way back and try to fix it. Right. Yeah, it's it's just it's yeah, it just doesn't work. <laughs> right. So, and I did say, you know, I want to I want to go back if you don't mind and and uh, clarify something because we do, you know, maybe people don't know that you and I, Angela, we we know each other pretty well, and we you know we tell each other jokes and we get the jokes, and maybe people didn't get the joke when we said that you don't even have to, you just have to show up, right? I do want to say that that what we've really done, and this is this is also one of those things that doesn't get communicated well up up to the uh, higher echelons, but we've made software development fun again. Nice. You know, and, <laughs> nice. and that's the thing. It's like we we enjoy going into work. We enjoy writing code. We enjoy making the things that the product owner wanted made. Or the customer, right? And the customer. And uh, hopefully the, the product owner is representing the customer. And the customer gets what they need in order to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. And that's really the goal here. And that's fun. Mm -hmm. We like seeing that. We don't like having to fix bugs. So let's stop doing, you know, stop doing the things we don't like to do and start doing the things that, that make things enjoyable. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned the cost of training in the way that they had the program structured previously, which was pretty prohibitive. So we've solved that problem also with cleaning it up to the entry level CSD. Sure. If you want the advanced stuff, please come to the ACSD because uh, sometimes these upper echelons that you mentioned will say, we're going agile just start sprinting. What? That was right. your training. It's like, wait a minute. If these are the people who have been asked to do their job in a new way, right? Not, not only, hey, a new way of working, but to make that work fun again, it's like, we've got to invest in them a little bit. We've got to get them some time to learn what this all means. Otherwise, it's it's kind of crazy to think that they're just going to you know, build the airplane while it's in mid-flight. That's that's not cool. Well, it is it is an investment, and and I, I I'm glad you used that word because uh, the problem with it was that it was from the external standpoint, from the client standpoint, this the CSD program was ten times as, as expensive, and they were looking at it just from the cost basis. So making it a little easier for them to, to absorb and get into it, maybe. But it was always a good investment. It was always, it always had a great return on investment. Absolutely. But people aren't aware of that until they do it. It's kind of like one of those, you know, it's 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 
you, you don't know until you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've said that my, my, you know, most of my three day technical courses, and this is of course, it can't be a guarantee, but it seems like most teams, if they really work at it, if they do it and they're allowed to do it and they're given the space to do it, if they follow these practices, they will get, they will, they will reap the benefits and pay off the, the amount of uh, expense that it, that it incurred within maybe six to 12 months, you know, less if than not year. sooner, if you talk about preventing defects. Oh, absolutely. You know, but I can't, you know, I'm not going to, and it takes, it takes, you know, we, we're giving them, let's say, let's say somebody takes all four days of training, which would be great, but it takes about a month after that to really, you know, of, of like almost daily practice, daily business, daily practice to really start to feel comfortable with that. So we're just giving them the head start. We're giving them the comfortable, uh, safe, fun head start on these practices Then they're going to have to do them for at least a month. Yeah. Practice you know. makes permanent. Practice so they got to get going. Well, I appreciate you taking the time today, Rob, to explain the exciting new simplified CSD and ACSD. So we're looking forward to those workshops in a couple of weeks. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. And And we got to get this guy back soon. Yeah, there you go. Because that's a wrap. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to know the best part about this? What's that? It's all being recorded. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be on the blooper reel. This is going to be on the gag reel.